things, they're generally speaking two parties or two actions. There's governance and there is service. And between God and man, God is the ruler and we are his subjects. God is the maker, the cause, the creator, the perfecter of all things. And the persons of God are not so separate in their nature that they are three gods, nor are they so constrained in nature that they are one person. It's one person and it's one God and three divine persons. We are creatures and we are distinct from every other creature. Yet we, were raised, we are raised higher and closer the more we have sanctifying grace in our souls. That brings us to a nearness to God. King David bids us, who was the first adorer of the Sacred Heart, King David. King David bids us to sing high praises to the one true God whom we know to be three in persons. I don't know if he knew that there was three persons in God. But he did have a love for the heart of God. St. Gregory calls it an evil mind which denies the three persons in one God. All that the Father has belongs to the Son. All that the Son has belongs to the Father and the Holy Ghost except his created human nature. The Father's power the Father's wisdom, the Father's love are equal in the Son and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost who is the personified love between the Father and the Son. All the Son has belongs to the Holy Ghost once again except His created human nature. And we must reverence equally the majesty of the three persons in the Blessed Trinity. We were all made in the image and glory of God on high, though we dwell on earth. We were made by the triune God, that the triune God might dwell in men. And that precisely occurred when each, and each one of us was baptized with the salvific waters of baptism. If the blessed Trinity does not dwell in our souls, it's because our souls have been darkened by sin. They have literally been disgraced. I and the Father are one, said our Lord. Not in person, but in divine nature and the substance of God. How good God is to those who love him. He tells us that if we love him, he will make his abode with us. He will come and he will live in our souls. There's no greater good we can have, my dear friends, than having the Blessed Trinity dwell within us. There's no greater good on earth. Nothing created, everything created is but a shadow of the beauty of the Blessed Trinity. St. Paul has much to teach us about the Blessed Trinity. You know, reading the, his epistles, he mentions several times how he was caught up to the third heaven. He speaks over and over again of the beauty and the power of the Blessed Trinity. He speaks of the Holy Ghost in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He speaks of God the Son in Romans chapter 8. Other times, he unites the three persons in one God with words similar to, and these words, for him, for of him, and by him, and with him, all things are made. In today's gospel, we see how our Lord made one of his ten manifestations to the apostles and disciples and friends. It was on the holy mountain in Galilee. Some of the apostles doubted, even to the point of believing that it was Jesus Christ as a ghost. It was his ghost. Our Lord appeared to them upon an exalted mountain to show them how they must pass 
from the earthly delights to obtain heavenly delights. They must give up the earthly delights and embrace the celestial. He who was made a little lower than the angels, they're speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ there in his human nature. He shares omnipotence, omnipotent power, co-eternally with the Father and the Holy Ghost. And our Lord tells them, teach them all things whatsoever I have commanded. Because God has placed such a momentous task upon the apostles and those who are to follow. He said, he promised he shall be with them until the end of time. We cannot say that the task is too difficult when he who can make all things possible and easy is with us. This promise was not just made to the apostles. <clears throat> Obviously because they are all dead. But this promise is made to you. This promise is made to me. In our every sufferings and trials, Christ is there to help us. It's consoling to know that God has promised to help us. Until the end of time, there will be good souls in whom the Holy Trinity will dwell and make their, their abode. Until the consummation of the world, our Lord tells them this so that they would extend their vision, their focus. He did not want them to, be mere, to merely look to the present good of the world, but the everlasting augmented glory of God in this world and especially in the world to come. Everything beautiful in this world is but a reflection of the beauty of God, a very poor reflection. He says, I am with you. And then our Lord says, I go. In his humanity, he departs from them. In his divinity, he returns as the Father does with the Holy Ghost. And we call this indwelling. He, the divine shepherd, will protect his sheep until he escorts the last one of them to those happy pastures of heaven. Our most important work, my dear friends, is reflected this week in the feast of Corpus Christi, the devotion and the honor and adoration that we give to our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. God love you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.